it's it's going. Thank you. At this time, we'll continue with our special meeting, Mr. Butler. First, uh, <clears throat> first item on your agenda today is a garbage. Well, what we talked about last board meeting <clears throat> was looking at the possibility of uh, Gulf County going mandatory garbage pickup, make it mandatory for for everyone to get on the garbage system. Give you a handout, <clears throat> and it's sort of explains what we've been talking about. <clears throat> Give an idea if there's in the area, there's three counties, County, Liberty, and Wakulla that's, that's got mandatory garbage to pick up. Um, say it this way, Calhoun does not enforce their policy. They have made it mandatory, but they're not really sending code enforcement out to, to look at everyone, make sure they own garbage. Um, what they would do, and if, if you went the same route that Calhoun did, what they do is if someone has got garbage piled up and it's obvious we don't have garbage service, then the code enforcement can go because you have an ordinance in to back it up. <clears throat> this will be the ordinance in place to make it mandatory for them to get on. So like a soft mandatory um, would not be as hard as putting on a tax bill where you would have to pay it. <clears throat> um, okay, Calhoun, um, waste management or the service provider bills individually to each, each and every customer. Uh, Liberty County bills most customers monthly with the water bills, or the bill on a quarterly basis. And what we find is the garbage companies like the idea of single payer where the county pays them, they don't have to worry about going out and hunting someone to pay a, pay a garbage bill. Makes it easier on them. Like today, you see the little next page over, they have about 2,512 customers in Gulf County, and they have sent out 2,512 bills to the residential customers. Uh, what kind of bills do the trim nurses? And that would be that would be sort of like hard mandatory. It would wind up on a tax bill at the end of the year, no option to get a poet. That's the one that we do know that um, there's a lot of people that don't pay a whole lot of tax, and this number could be higher than what the tax amount is. And that could hit some people hard. But um, next page. Uh, there's currently 2,512 customers in unincorporated Gulf County with garbage service. So we're talking about outside, outside of two cities. Okay. <clears throat> uh, there are approximately 6,500 residences in unincorporated Gulf County. Right. Scott, Peter Scott run these numbers. Uh, he, he double checked them. The numbers seem high, but he don't, and Scott can put an address for each one of those. So we know there's 6,500, and at some point in time, if you did go the hard mandatory, we'd have to figure out who's going to get this garbage bill. Is it going to be the house, <clears throat> the house trailer, the RV, some people live in sheds, um, some people live, uh, we know at least one living in a semi trailer. Who gets the bills? But right now, anyone with address is what that 6,500 represents. Um, between this information between uh, June 2012 and May 2013, there were approximately 3,187 3, tons of garbage removed from Gulf County. And this is what we're looking at, too. Probably the tonnage won't go up when you put everyone on garbage if you made everyone mandatory. The number of tons that our service provider hauls out of the county probably won't change. It just they're probably getting the money from more sources than what they are now. Uh, our options uh, contract with waste management to begin mandatory garbage pickup and have them build customers directly. Uh, the pro to that, that would be nothing more than you, uh, a vote when you pass an ordinance saying it's mandatory. <clears throat> and and it would be what we call a soft mandatory. Uh, you can implement the program immediately. Uh, puts all responsibility for collection of the fees on the vendor. Uh, the cons to that will be we still have a large number um, of residences without garbage service, and we know everyone will not get on if you if you do it that way. Um, the addresses will be noted in terms of the code enforcement, and that will be typically, I don't think it's ever been intent, we don't do it to anything today. If we have a code enforcement issue, 
It's got to be brought to our attention. We, we don't have a code of course to go out and just searching for, for problems. And you know, that's probably going to be your, your highest disposal rate um, of all the mandatories. Or, in this case, uh, file a resolution of intent. The resolution of intent must be filed prior to January 1st, so uh, this, this coming January 1st, on the year preceding placement on trim notice. So if you want to try to do this on the hard mandatory route, you would, um, before January, you file uh, a resolution of intent. And, and that would get you in the, in the hopper for uh, the people paying the tax to file and file um, to start paying this mortgage bill. <clears throat> to, be, to be safe that way, you need to convert the solid waste assessment study to determine the property to be included or executed and waste for services. Now, for study, it's approximately $43,000 plus cost of mail notices. Look at number from what other counties have done. Um, you could you could go ahead and just send everybody put it, put on the trim notice, and someone's probably going to challenge you. And then when they do challenge, we're going to win it. And it, if we have someone to do the study first, then we're pretty sure we're going to win if it gets to court. And we don't want to get challenged and lose when we get to court. Now the pros of that should keep the garbage out of the woods in other areas. Should, should it help lower the overall garbage? Please, the cons will be some people will have to pay for garbage pickup and have never had to pay before. Or if we know some people today is probably not paying garbage fees. Um, the line item for garbage pickup in the tax bill may be larger than actual property tax. That would, be, that would be a downside to it. Or, where I saw this, um, proposed referendum for West Side sales tax <clears throat> to be placed on ballot, either on the next regular election or special election, and let the majority of the voters decide. And you can do it. We are, we are beyond the point now where the super majority of the board can place another high penny or penny on uh, and sales tax. And it's to the point now you take the, <clears throat> the electorate to take it out if you want to do it now. So you put on a referendum and let the people vote to put a one cent or a half cent on the sale for paper garbage. Uh, Walton County has done that. They pay for garbage bill, pay for landfill bills out of one cent. They collect a lot, lot more money than Walton County than we do here. But um, that's one idea. The pros of that would be no more garbage bills. And the, and the visitors help pay garbage bill. Anybody that would have traveled through Gulf County and pay sales tax would help pay it that way. And that would be after the majority of people would need to do that because they have to vote to say yes. Uh, there'd be no additional work for code enforcement. There'd be no reason when you know, all you try to and put it somewhere else's container because it's free. Um, excess things collected could be used to pay towards landfill. Uh, we look at the numbers, there's not enough money to pay for uh, garbage pick up on landfill, but if you did go a penny, there would be some money to go towards landfill, and that would be some relief to have alone. So, the plan would be, you know, would be just make it mandatory. Or one, one, just do nothing. You could just do nothing and let it go like it is. Uh, or, if you were to make it mandatory, you could um, hope that uh, the more people would get on. There's, there's room for another, uh, between 2,500 and 6,500, 4,000 more customers to get on. So, if you got a lot of those, you could lower the bills. Or, you could, um, that's the resolution before January 1st and, and start the process, put on a tax bill at the end of the year. And, um, or you could put on the uh, referendum and let people vote whether or not they want sales tax to pay for garbage. <clears throat> so, in a nutshell, that's, that's what could be done. Um, what we're looking at, um, what's it going to save Gulf County? If you're not mandatory, this doesn't come out, the county coffers that comes off, every, everyone individually pays their own garbage bill today. Um, but it would be the same people that, that gets taxed, a lot of those would get a lower garbage bill. So it's come out of the same pocket just for different reasons. Uh, for your information, the current contract, you've got a copy of the contract in front of you, it expires last year in May of 2014. And we're looking at if you wanted us, the way we, what would, what would be it for Gulf County, if we could lower the garbage bill enough to allow the service provider to pick up 
largely <clears throat> to wash them up, whatever we negotiated out. So wash them up, and, and we had already been talking with the service provider, and they'd sell out the large scale amount would be about three cubic yards of yard debris. They could pick up, they will pick it up with a garbage truck, they come down with an M truck or some other type truck and pick it up. If we could get the numbers go lower enough that they would come by and pick up the yard debris, and that means we don't have to pick up the yard debris, then we, we could save some money. I mean, that, that would be what's in it for us. We could save the, um, the expense to going out and picking up yard debris. And this, like I say, about three inch or smaller. And you'd probably want to also put some prohibition on, on people putting pine trees and, and bigger things than that on the right away. But we're, we do spend a lot of time. We, we can use our, our inmate crews in grass and working ditches and, and do some other things other than going around and picking up yard debris and spend a lot of money on the cash and uh, wearing care on, on the vehicles. So, if you put, if the board considers placing garbage bill on the tax tax bill, it will allow for a lower rate, will eliminate trash deposit anywhere other than the individual garbage containers. The board will need to determine where is the residence, an RV house. How do you figure it out? You could only do that with a with a study to really be safe in, in court. So if we, if we can like I say you do nothing or make it mandatory, pick it up and make it self mandatory on the tax bill or the whole thing would be put it on a referendum for the people to vote on their own whether or not they want to place a tax on itself to, to have a free garbage bill. If, um, whichever one looks right. If you want to go the, uh, uh, the tax bill route, we'd need to have something ready before January. And two, we'd also have to have a study done before January, which can be pretty expensive. Well, the board heard from Mr. Butler. Do you have any comments from the board? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'll start it off. I guess I'll be the bad guy here. But uh, I'm for not doing anything with this program. And my reason is, I guess I'm maybe from the old school. I hate somebody to come to me and tell me, Mr. Michael Moore, you've got to pay me $20 a month. Whether you like it or not, that's what you're going to pay, you know, basically. Uh, for garbage pickup, there is a lot of people in my district who survive the best way they can. You know, and part of that is whether it's, whether it's legal or whether it's not, but part of that is burning the trash. Uh, <clears throat> this is something that I won't support, won't support today. And when you mention putting it on the trim notice of your of your tax bills. Here's what the public looks at. When they look at that trim notice, they're looking at that tax bill. I don't care if the school board's taxes are higher than the counties. I don't care if the city is paying higher than the county. We're the ones that get the blunt here. When they look at that property tax bill, they look at us. They don't look at the school board. Or I'm talking to the majority of the people. Uh, <clears throat> Now, I do like the idea of the one cent sales tax. Now, I, I, I think that is something that I feel like that might work for the county, might work for the people that I represent. Uh, majority of that bill will be coming from the tourists with that one cent sales tax. And I think that might work if, if we could sell that to do away with their garbage bill, where they wouldn't have to pay a garbage bill. I, I'm in favor of the, of the sales tax, but the rest of it, I, I just can't. I, I can't do it, Jim, and that's and that's where I'm. That's where I stand with. We got comments from Mr. McDaniel. Mr. Michael, yes. Do we have anything? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Butler, thank you for preparing this and give us the Absolutely. gifts and the hands and the pros and the cons. Uh, present time, Guff County does not collect any money or garbage uh, that's picked up by waste management. So in, in theory, if we were to uh, 
say, mandatory, hard mandatory, or soft mandatory, it would more or less, it would put more money into uh, waste management who we are contracted with now. Am, am I correct there? As the more people came on, you still have more cash. Three thousand, that's kind of about out of uh, what was it? Twenty, only twenty. Well, where is it at? Twenty-five hundred and twelve current customers. Yeah, that, I can't hardly. Uh, I can accept the numbers, but four thousand people in unincorporated areas of Gulf County does not do not have any type of garbage. Uh, yes. Taking waste management numbers, they say we have 2,512 customers, and well, we have counted units. Taking nothing from the colleagues here, but I rode out into the district that I represent, and <laughs> the line share of the people on Thursdays, normally they pick up uh, uh, in the north end of the county on Thursdays in the area that uh, they pick mine up. I live in the county, and... Uh, there's a lot of cans along the highways there, uh, especially I'm talking about uh, uh, north of Weaver Hitchcock up in the uh, uh, Idlewood, that area, you go out in the Williamsburg area, old Highway 22 along there, a lot. Uh, and I, I don't see it with the inmate crews who I, I talk with every day, every day. And uh, uh, they're not complaining. Well, it, the biggest complaint I get out of them is uh, these uh, uh, the uh, Gulf Forest. I mean, uh, <coughs> FCI, the people that work in Bay County that use Road Five. That's where they throw all their McDonald's and their Sonics, and we don't have any of that in Weewall, by the way. But uh, that's the biggest litter that they have to pick up. That it's that has anything to do with, like, let's say, with household garbage. That's the only street I have on our road in in the district I represent is Road Five, and it's all come from corrections officers, folks in there, and the sheriff here <coughs> can't put somebody out there 24/7, and uh, the police that up. But we don't have a lot of that from the inmate crews that work the roads, so. I don't know. I've had some elderly people come to me, and uh, you know, me and my brother, we share a can together, and we split the bill. I have maybe one garbage, maybe one bag a week, and he may not even have a bag. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of leaning toward uh, yes. Please. Please. On the differences in those numbers too. The 6,500 takes into account multiple, like you're saying, multiple houses possibly on a parcel that are sharing one bill, where uh, waste management's probably billing them one bill, but there's actually like maybe four to nine mobile homes or something maybe on that one parcel that they're just billing as one. So I, I treat them as nine, they see it as one. However, we work it out in the end, that's that's how it's waste management, I guess. That's too. where the problem's at. Then when yeah, so that's, yeah, you're going to oh. get... And see, this excludes the two uh, municipalities in there. Okay. Yes. For example, and this is one of the things I was talking about this morning, Perry Dane just got 200 units. Yep. They don't have one garbage service, would be my guess, because yep. they have a community garbage service. It's probably skewed a little bit. I would think it's probably 600 high, but it's still quite a few. I mean, we have still we've got 2,500 people aboard that kind of garbage service. So some of those numbers are skewed. I've read over this and looked at it, and I'm, I'm for keeping our county clean. And uh, one of the biggest thorns on my side is all this uh, taken, uh, just like in Stanford here with the uh, film pickup. It's just about become an entitlement program, which it wasn't intended to be that. But uh, that's the biggest issue as far as uh, garbage of uh, people. In the milk cartons and egg cartons and things like that. I, I would like to look as I hate to put a tax on people. I hate, I, I hate government, tell you the honest truth. I don't like government. I think we have to have it. So rules and regulations, and we about regulate ourselves to death. Not here in this county, in the United States, in the United States. This one cent sales tax, uh, me, that kind of spreads it around. Uh, if I spend two hundred dollars or X number of dollars a month on uh, certain items, and you know naturally in the state of Florida, foods, all your foods and your medicines are tax exempt. 
all of that comes under there. But uh, how would you do this if you put a one cent sales tax on? People voted for it. How would you? What about the two municipalities? How would they figure into it? <clears throat> I'm not sure what the more percentage on their part. All right. Let me ask this question. In a survey where one cent sales tax will cover waste management or waste whoever the the uh, uh, the uh, garbage service that we have under contract will one cent cover it. One cent sales tax. One cent will more than cover <clears throat> what we have unincorporated. Right now? Will more than cover what we have. But I'm not talking about the two cities. Now, it would probably behoove us to have a conversation with the two cities and see if we can get them on board and go out and see what, what we think the total county could be picked up for. Well, it'd be nice if we could get the whole entire county and the, the county and the two. See, right now we have three different. City of Port St. Joe has Waste Pro, Gulf County has uh, Waste Management, the City of Weewa Hitchka has Beolia or. Uh, <laughs> Arca sanitation, so you know, if we could all get under, not I'm, I'm strongly for free enterprise, and uh, but if we could get under one blanket but when it comes kind of like ours is coming up in uh, what next year, this time next year, prior, but if we could all get under one umbrella, it might help reduce down a little bit, word might, but uh, I hate to uh. I have something you can't enforce. And again, you say this is soft mandatory. All that we're doing is just putting it on the books. Uh, Commissioner McElmore would best be put on the book, or it would be it would be there but not enforced. Uh, I don't know. That, uh, uh, let me yield. Thank you. And I, I understand we're under contract till May, but I would I'd like to see. If this went out to bid, what the figures would be, if we could get some better figures from the other providers, I think that would factor into our decision as well. I, I don't want to put any uh, burden on folks, but I do think we have to come up with a solution for the garbage issue and with the limb truck issue. I can see where we spend a lot of time picking up yard debris, and I, I don't think it's the most efficient way to pick up the yard debris. Um, so I, I, I don't know how waste management feels about us being under contract and, and discussing looking at figures from other companies, but I think that that should, would be information that we would need before we could really make a decision to take any of those paths. Yeah. <clears throat> I, like the, I like the part about the one cent sales tax. I mean, it's given the chance to be spread around. Amongst everybody, we could get these cities on on board with that. That one six sales tax on gonna cover everything. It's gonna cover everything. I mean, it'll. That sounds real good to me because you know in my district right now we already mandatory garbage pickup. So. Mr. Chairman, one other thing, if I may, uh, we'll take. Uh, let's just use your district. The probably all the residents. Your district may be less than one percent, or in the city of Port St. Joe. I'm a, I'm pretty. I don't think anybody lives. I, I know you got down in there. And the city of Port St. Joe bill, just like uh, up in We Were if you live in the city of We Were you have water, or and our sewer. You're going to get a garbage bill. And the city of Weaver Hitchcock collects for uh, parker sanitation. You pay your bill because I know I have a, a resident inside the city and I have to pay there plus one outside. I pay every three months. It's monthly in the city, and the one that I'm in where I live is every three months to waste management somewhere in Carolina or Virginia, wherever it is. I don't know. Anyway, uh, so they've got a little control. In the city of Weaver Hitchcock, they get a percentage are collecting or handling the billing, you know. Out in the kit. That's more if you got water, you got you got garbage there. And it's probably the same here with the city of Port St. Joe. If you hooked up the water power, you got garbage. 
we're in the outlying areas, I don't know. And Mr. McLemore, he has a lot of weekend people over in the geographics of it over on the Apalachicola, Chipola River area. People that come down maybe on the weekend or once a month or maybe in there during the hunting season, they got a little old place. I don't know. It's you got to look at the geographics of all of it. And, uh, That's just I lean really, more towards this letting the people, they not aware if it. I'm trying to pass a book, I'll make a decision whether it's good or bad. That's what we elected to do. But, uh, you know, at least feel like if you can get them involved in it, a lot of times you're better off. You know, I don't say, well, I know what's best for you. Well, uh, I don't like to go down that road. Get the people involved. If, if we did decide to go with the one cent, put it out to the public, like the school board did, let the public decide, you know, if the majority says okay. And I think that's a win for Gulf County because of those people that you just mentioned that's coming down from wherever to their fishing camp or whatever, and they buy a loaf of bread. They're going to pay their part. But honestly, I think that that's the only way that we should go. That's the only way that Carmen's going to go, that Carmen will support. Y'all hash it out. Y'all know where we're at. But I think that Mr. Butler and them is needing some direction on this. This is why we set special meeting up today. So I'm prepared to take a vote today on it. Do we have an idea of the cost for the referendum estimate of what it would cost us to vote a referendum, special election, or in the next regular election? It would be a real cost in a regular election. <clears throat> or to run special election board. I heard the number of 20,000. Yeah, I heard something. Yeah. Well, uh, like I said, in the city of St. Joe, we, we pay these pay hour garbage pickup, and from what I understand, we pay in um, Waste Pro, and the city takes something off the top of it. They add something to it to, you know, take care of the services that they provide for us to build it and collecting the money, so. Right now, like I said, my district right now is into, uh, we got mandatory garbage pickup, and um, I don't see nothing wrong with mandatory garbage pickup, but we got commissioners up here that got a district that don't, does not have mandatory garbage pickup, so I would like to just if we put it on the referendum and let the people, let the people. Go see it now. Do we have anything from the public? Anybody from the public want to speak on this issue? Mr. Chairman, just... It's not here. <clears throat> if you if the board decided to go with the soft mandatory, say so it's mandatory to get on garbage. And then hopefully it's some more to get on garbage. And then for instance, if we could if you did that and allow us to negotiate with your service provider to try to get for for instance, every hundred new customers it would bring the rate down so much. If we brought in two hundred customers, three hundred, five hundred, seven hundred an increment, you know, some increment, would be 100 or 500 customers, bring the rate down, it would, um, it would give everybody some relief. Everybody's paying guard bill today. Now, that, that would be the soft mandatory if you did. Now, and then we could, we could be going through the process of doing a referendum. But, Mr. Butler, you don't you understand this. And, and this kind of aggravates me a little bit now. But, you know, y'all keep saying soft. Mandatory garbage pickup, soft mandatory garbage pickup. That's not what those people are going to understand there. When you say mandatory garbage pickup, they don't understand soft mandatory garbage pickup. But that's what we have to deal with. <coughs> deal with excuse me. You know, so so this soft mandatory garbage pickup, I yeah, don't I mean. like the idea of it. You know, it's either mandatory garbage pickup <laughs> or not. Let me take the blame for it. This is coming from the budget review committee. Basically, it's the real savings to the county is to get out of the roadside. The only real savings. It doesn't matter if, if everybody was on mandatory garbage today and we still did the same roadside pickup. It doesn't help the county one penny. So, I mean, what we're trying to do with the salt mandatory, and again, that's our term. They have an 82, 83 percent collection rate in county to county with their salt mandatory. Twice our collection rate based on. 
if, if whichever way you decide, if, if we go to it, we've got to get out of the roadside. <coughs> okay. Okay. Let's go ahead. Let, let me do this. Let me make this suggestion, Mr. Hammond, because I, I, I can do this with my inmate labor crews. I know I can. Park the truck. That's the biggest expense. Park the truck. The way with the employee that you have driving that truck, let the inmate labor do the roadside pickup. We can do it. Guarantee you. And, and, and that'll save you money. Yeah. That, the money. The money is in the truck, which is wearing out, that we have to buy fuel for. We have to pay the employee, which we could use him somewhere else. We can, he's going to work regardless of where he's at. I mean, we're going to have that expense. But our expense is the truck and the fuel. That's the expense. And, and one overarching thing, again, just from staff side. Based on the number of tons that you charge for and the number of tons coming in the landfill, half of what comes in the landfill is free, which means we're picking it up. So I mean, you know, we're collecting seventy thousand dollars or whatever in fees. We're losing seventy thousand in fees, or actually it's closer to a hundred for free stuff. And and some of it's coming from the land truck, but all of these work crews pick up roadside debris, and all of it that the county picks up is free. So I mean, that you're losing the tipping fee plus your you're paying to pick it up, and it's free to be picked up. So, I mean, if, if we were to get out of that, they would pay the tipping fee. So not only would we not be picking it up, whoever's disposing of it would pay. So, I mean, that, that's that's the, the overall goal of getting garbage. Mandatory stall. Mr. So Chairman. It would pass. Let, let me. Hold on. Oh. It's Pat. Oh, okay. Sorry to be late, Pat Hardman, <clears throat> Coastal Community Association of the Mountains. Okay. Um, mandatory garbage pickup makes sense off across the board. Um, we're, we're, we, whoever uses a service ought to pay some for that service. Excuse me. Yes, sir. It makes sense for you. To me. It yes, might sir. make sense for Commissioner Mike Moore. In, okay. my, in my opinion. Would I help? Okay. In my opinion. Um, Bottom line is people that are having services ought to pay for it. Same thing with the tourists out, out on the beaches with the uh, bed taxes and what have you. Whoever makes the garbage problem ought to be paying some of the share for cost of picking it up. Um, I've already spoken to you in terms of the, of the cost it has to the contractors with and other people who have Dempsey dumpsters or the dumpster containers uh, by not having mandatory garbage pickup. Uh, we're, we're getting hit with an extra cost of that, of having to clean the ho household garbage out. Um, people who need help with the garbage, I don't have any problem paying some extra taxes to help those people. I do have problems paying for people who are simply using the system. And I think we can get around those that have, have economic or, or elderly or things like that with the soft, and that is our term, soft. Um, I think, too, if you go to mandatory, there ought to be some way to shift the roadside pickup into the cost of the overall cost of me having it picked up at my yard. And there again, we would now have people who are putting the garbage out on the road or what have you. If it's in front of a house, you can pretty well be sure it's coming off of that lot. We're getting an awful lot of garbage throughout South Gulf County that somebody is paying to have their place cleaned and the cleaners are taking it and dumping it on the side of the road, cutting out the county money, costing us more, you would alleviate that. So from a business standpoint, my opinion, again, would be that if we go to mandatory, it's fair for everybody in the county. And it's fair for the people who are creating the garbage as well as the ones who are having to pay for it now who are, who are creating their own but paying for someone else's. So I'd ask you to go to mandatory garbage, at least to try it, um, and negotiate down price. I think we will save all the owners money on the long run. We will save the county money. It, it's just economics. So please, let's have some mandatory garbage pickup. Thank you. Also, I have a question, Mr. Butler. Would the provider uh, make arrangements for vacant homes or as a, a charger, will they also be charged for garbage pickup? <coughs> I 
what's that called? Which mandatory you went with? <coughs> soft mandatory. Soft mandatory. Well, you just voluntarily get on this. You voluntarily get on the mandatory system. It's lots of work. What is the difference between what we have now and the soft mandatory? Well, you, you don't, the county commission is not an ordinance saying you must get on garbage. Okay, so we will right. have, an, in the soft mandatory, we'll have an ordinance right. telling folks they have to get on, but it's still, they have to take the action oh. to order the pickup. Yes, and, and the difference would be now when you see a pile of trash, garbage on the side of the road and it not being picked up, the only person can go out with a ordinance behind him to, to make it. But wouldn't those... If somebody is willing to violate the ordinance, would they put their garbage in front of their house to show they're the ones violating the ordinance, or would they drop it off down the road, you know, like Ms. Hardman is saying, out at some other location? Probably um, both. I, I also, one concern about the one cent sales tax, it, it, it does seem like, a, you know, it's got some pros to it, but my understanding is that many of our shop owners and vendors already struggle with sales. Now, we do well at certain times of the year, but, but they're always trying to build their business, and I'm concerned about it putting a burden on those folks. And I understand wanting, if the tourists come in and they generate trash, that they should pay for that, but they, they would pay for that uh, through whoever is Venting to them would pass on those costs for trash pickup and incorporate it into the price of their rent. So essentially, they do pay for that when they come. So we still would have if they rent. paying if they rent if they rent or if they park on a, a lot. What would you mean, like an RV? Like, a, like a camp house that they own. Mm -hmm. They only come down like a vacation home. They bring their garbage with them, but they don't take it back. Right. So and they pay no garbage bill. That cost would be attached to wherever they're parking <clears throat> on their lot, correct? But I do think it's being passed on to the user, which I think is, in my opinion, the user fee makes sense. But I would want to, um, I, I wouldn't want to incentivize people to take their trash and put it down the street or in the woods, and I'm afraid that this may incentivize them if it's too soft. And um, I also would want some type of a provision for um, folks at a certain economic level that is large of a burden to bear. I'd like to see some better pricing. Okay, let's do this. We've all discussed it. Appreciate the budgets working on this. They work tirelessly on this. I'm telling you, I didn't sell it. I'm going to put a motion on the table today that we kill the mandatory garbage and accept the one cent forward on the sales tax on the referendum. Got a motion by Mr. Michael. Passes or not, that's my motion. Got a motion by Mr. Michael Moore. Second. Let me second for discussion, second for discussion. Mr. Chairman. I may, I'll reserve the withdrawal. Uh, on the one cent sales tax, uh, I can't see if we go that route, go out for a special election, the next general election, and Butler said it would be little to none to put it on the ballot. General election, not a general election, what we got, presidential, governor, and everything. We're talking about a year. One year. A year and a couple of months one year. from now. Uh, for that one. Don't spend the money for the special no, no, I'm We're not going out to spend $20,000 for the special election. election you have, that's, that's different from what we're doing and what the school board done. But yeah. that gives us no financial relief that Mr. Hammond no. is discussing for over a year because it would be November of 2014. What we're, what we're going back to, Commissioner Bryan, is this. I think we using right here is the fact it's not what's... Uh, what we're into, and let me just say it this way, or occasionally you'll see where maybe a uh, bag of garbage might have blew out of a boat or something on the way out there in the middle of the highway somewhere. Uh, I don't think it's household garbage what's eating our lunch here. It's this uh, couches and uh, limbs and debris. Uh, I know we run in, what, two limb trucks and uh, 
people in the district I represent, they'll call. I said, well, trucks in the area. It may lay there five weeks. You understand, I'm not sending it up there just to pick it up. When the truck is working that district, we will get it. Other than that, it's going to lay right there. We're not going to run these trucks back and forth, back and forth. But, uh, <coughs> Mr. Comment, Mr. Chairman, <coughs> Budget Review Committee is going to and trying to figure out how to, how to make the world more really smoother. And it has never been our discussion to take the little trucks and park them. There's plenty of work, but what they could do. And there's that in the joke using the landfill that could be used other places. Also they made work crews just running the vans out and all them trailer load up, trailer load up, trailer load of multiple trailer loads per day on, on debris. But if they make crews to still be working too to do some other things, it doesn't cost us as much fuel to go and cut glass all day because one time out, one time back, had to both pick up debris and run it out, run it out. So we, we are serving personnel, and we could still use those people. We have plenty of work for them. It's just a very cheaper way of using them. We, we cut out a lot of one. We could get some typically as as we got to the landfill. Two, we wouldn't be making those multiple loads per day, um, two more loads a day to the landfill. So it's <clears throat> it's not like. <clears throat> Let's, let's get rid of the trucks and let's get rid of those people. We, we can have plenty of work for them. You see around this courthouse that we, uh, we uh, talked back up a little bit, but that was not too long ago, a few months ago, six months ago, we didn't have a whole lot of time being cut grass around the courthouse because we're short on people. We're short on inmate crews now. You're a couple short now what you were. <clears throat> so it, the whole discussion was, I can we do things more efficiently than what we're doing now? And not going out and get, you know, we still got trucks, we use trucks if we need them. Uh, not get rid of personnel, because you need the personnel. You got uh, plenty of other things for them to be doing. That was, that's a general idea of what the budget committee is trying to do is to what is in it for Gulf County, we would pick up the less trash from the side of the road. What is in, in the waste provider, we pick it up and haul it to another county. It's not even, it won't shorten the life of our landfill. If you take our landfill, it shortens the life of the landfill and Free. Let, let me say another thing here about just like if when we pick up, uh, and I know I'm familiar with Mr. McElmore's district, and he, like he's very familiar with mine, when the uh, inmates crews, inmate crews, where some garbage has been thrown out, we're talking about household garbage, they bag it, they take it up to uh, uh, Dead Lakes Park campground, which is a big dumpster up there, and they place that in there, it doesn't come down. Here, some might, I don't know, but the lion's share all of those there, and then it's hauled out of the county. It's not Bims is where the trouble is, but yeah. I know when they pick up household garbage, it's bag, it's put in that dumpster at Dead Lake yeah. Park. And your, your crew uses, they work out of the for some. Absolutely, absolutely. Can I, uh, can I just bring something, one other thing out, because Don has touched on this, and, and this, is, this is something that kind of, irritates me a little bit. Uh, how many, right now, how many inmates do you have in your jail over there? And we have to pull an inmate labor crew off from the road to come in here and maintain this courthouse? Why? Three sets of trust. Three sets of trust. I can't use most of the inmates that I have, I can't use. Sometimes, I mean, we used to, to keep quite a few. We've got a count that's good, but I can't, a violation of probation folks, I, I can't use, I can't use somebody waiting to go to trial for whatever they have to be something. We got an inmate over right now that's been there, I know, I know you've been there three months with you, two months. What does he do? Give me a hint on the name of what the yeah, well, I won't, no, I won't, I won't call it, I won't call her name, but you know who I'm talking about. He works yes. With, he works in Bay Area Kitchen. They, they actually do the, the uh, maintenance around the jail, and, you know, we cut our own grass inside the brick yard and in and around the jail, but not the... Uh, What's wrong with buying him a lawnmower and letting him cut his grass? Well, 
he's there, he's gonna be with you. If he runs the sheriff right there, he's gonna he's gonna run down to the swamp and we're gonna catch him. He's not a convicted killer. We keep him busy, and that's what you want me to do. You got other inmates, Michael, that you don't have to let outside that you can put in that kitchen. He should be eligible to go outside and work. You follow me? Yes, sir. I don't understand this this courthouse maintenance here on the yards. You were twenty something inmates. Buy a lawnmower. Buy a weed eater. I just want to touch on the contract. Um, you all, there's a motion and a second for discussion right now amongst you all in the various recommendations from staff on soft mandatory one cent sales. I just want to speak real quickly to the contract. It's timely that you're all discussing this right now, and then I know you all talked about it, and it's May of 2014. Uh, historically, Gulf County, as well as many counties, these solid waste vendors are going to do multi year contracts. Right now, you're in the you're going you're in your last year of a five-year agreement. Going back to the 90s, you've had five, six-year renewals on these contracts with various vendors. Um, your contract calls for a four-month notice in advance of that May date. So there's obviously they do that the vendor so that they can do all their legwork and the county can as well. But January of this year is when that contractor is going to come back to you all and look for a commitment and an extension or a renegotiation. Um, so you having this discussion right now separate apart from the sales tax, soft mandatory rollouts is important because obviously you have to discuss on what direction you're going to take. So roll in your discussion and notice the vendor at some point of what direction you're all going to go in as whatever you all decide. It's going to be, for all intents and purposes, we're in August of 2013. So in the next three months, we're going to need to now start noticing our current contract provider and let them know what direction you're all going to go in. So as you all make these decisions right now, we're going to need to notice waste management of what, you, what direction you're going to head in as well. Um, status quo, you know, Mr. So Attorney, so left, so. that's why I made the motion. That's right. And, 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 and we have a second. You know, if it fails, it fails. If it passes, it passes. But the one thing I, I do like, Ms. Bryan, what, when it comes to time that our contract is up with waste management or before we can get out before, I would like to see us put this back out to bid and to the whole public. But I move forward today to give y'all some direction and give the uh, vendors some direction. It, if I just have one more comment. If, if we do vote and you approve this today, it basically pushes the issue off 16 months as far as uh, the expenses to the county. And, and that, that's a long time for us to not be addressing these issues that are harming us with the landfill tipping fees and the uh, truck picking up. And I just want you to keep that in mind, that it's pushing the problem down the road. And to add to the commissioner's comments, 16 months then plus, you're going to enter a new contract come spring of 2014. So whatever the playing field is for you as a county, you're going to chart that. If, if, if Mr. Uh, McLemore's recommendation is to put it out to bid, what is the bid? What is the RFP? So when you put those parameters out there, the county's going to lay it out for the next five years too. So these decisions right now, not only 16 months in terms of a sales tax, but your next five years of your contract and what your specs are and what you expect of your vendor are going to be a part of this as well. So it's a commitment five years. And that's what I was just trying to and, emphasize. And there's where I think we failed at in the past by doing, by doing these long-term contracts. I think we need to shorten those up. This is where we got into a bind right now with waste management. They've done us an excellent job, but we haven't been able to do anything the last two or three years because they've been under contract with us. And, and, I think we need to look at that in the future. And I don't want to represent the vendors. I know that part of their competitive pricing is getting a multi-year commitment so that they give the constituents of Gulf County and all these counties the best price they can. They, in turn, look for uh, commitments to drive the price down. So that's part of the, I'm sure you'll hear that from the vendors when they come in and make their presentations. Well, we got a motion on the floor. Would you, Mr. Chairman, uh, a little time's lap. Could we get the motion read back? Yes, that's what Please. I was just a minute. The motion by Commissioner uh, McLemore was to kill mandatory garbage and accept one set sales tax on referendum, seconded for discussion by Commissioner McDaniel. Daniel and McLemore 
uh, clarified that they did not want this to go out on a special referendum, but to put it on the regu regular election cycle. Everyone understand the motion that's on the floor. I still have a second. I'll hold a second, yes. Got a motion by Mr. Mike Daniels. I got stand. Mr. Michael Moore. Got a second by Mr. Mike Daniels. Do I have any opposed? I'm opposed. Got one opposed. Motion carries three to one. Mr. Chairman, it would probably be who was too if we had a conversation with the students. If, if we wind up and people put a one cent sale cash on itself and we have to split it with students and not sure when their contracts are up, ours is up last year in May of 2014. Those may be 2015. We don't know what, right now we don't know when it is. Mr. Bolt, let me ask you a question. So you saying if the sales type will have to be split with the city, but the, will the city uh, residents still have to pay? How does it pick up like they pay in? Yeah. It's kind of what the city's wanted. If they wanted to, to agree with us that um, they pay sell, we pay the sales tax and they get free garbage service, they'd be fine. You know, the amount of money the city's getting would be determined at some point in time. <clears throat> or if the city would opt out and say, no, we don't want to agree with you, and we get our share and we pay our garbage bill, it would be a single payer from us to uh, to service provider, whoever that is, and the city keep doing what they're doing. So they could they could get in with us or not get in with us. What are they going to do? But my concern is with the residents of the cities. He types twice. In other words, they're paying the one cent. Plus, would they be paying city hall for the garbage pickup? I would I would hope not because if they chose to go with us, then that would be their garbage bill. The garbage portion would be free. I guess it would be up to the city how they applied that those funds to their budgetary need. But the main thing is put it on the referendum, let the people decide, and then the city, if they want to cut their part out, then they cut it out. Is the way I see it would work if it passed. And they're under contract too. So yeah. I don't know specifically, but cycle that the city. I just want to make sure that this ain't going to run into a spot where the residents of the city is going to be called, called in there. Just like we right now with the police departments. The residents of the city pay for two police departments. And I don't, and I don't want to run this into the same situation that we got with that. That's the only thing. I mean, I like what we're talking about. I just don't want to run that into it. As of right now, see, when we was talking a few minutes ago, it was Mr. Michael, Mr. Mike Dang, Mr. Michael Moore, problem with his district. Now we're talking about my district now, you know, that's with the district in Tykes twice for garbage. And the one cent plus the... And it's the same, it's no different, Mr. Smiley, than the, than the property tax. If you live in the city, you pay a city property tax. If you live in the county, you pay a you're double tax. You know, so I, I don't know what the answer is. That's what we got the attorney for. I know we're paying the big bucks. Can you get it figured out? Okay. Ms. Butler? Yeah, there's a board of to make contact with the city, so they're interested in the referendum route. I'd love for you to make contact. Okay. Okay. What would be nice, and we get off this, it's already passed, man, if the municipalities and the county uh, let me just throw this out here we coming up next year and, uh, we negotiate hours and uh, we'll just say we save waste management it'd be nice if we could talk with the city of Port St. Joe say two years from now their contractor ever when it does if we could all in the city we were Hitchcock maybe all could get out of the same umbrella the same uh, garbage uh, 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 People, bring it down a little bit. I could. If we could work it together to where all the contracts came together at one time and do well, it. I mean, county, county. if two years now, say they like two years, and then that two years, they automatically fall under. Do a, do a county bid, complete county. I'm talking about city and county. Do a complete bid. In terms of the time of the contracts, Commissioner, if I think Don and the meetings are productive and they have a commitment from the two cities, then the county will have some indication as to bid out their contract on a shorter term so that 
have a commitment of the municipalities. If they don't have that commitment, then you may all want to go out and get your most competitive price, and it may mean pushing out your contract. So I think after those meetings with the cities, you might have a better indication of whether they want to commit to you, and that way it will give you an idea of how to develop your RFP going into next year. Yep. Um, Mr. Chair, next item is TDC, and Mr. Legal is going to handle that. Uh, Senator Frank and I have been discussing uh, the TDC policy with regards to sponsorship. You all this past year accepted the TDC's recommendations for policy funding. Um, they revised their policies, and you all have a copy of it in there in front of you. Um, in their policy for reimbursements, there is specific language as to how a applicant would be reimbursed after they submit various documents and they're pre-approved by the marketing committee at the TDC. Um, discussions with Ms. Jenkins go back and forth trying to find out a way that there's specific applicant sponsorship funds that are low budget in the community, not-for-profits that have an established need for some pre-authorization or pre-funding. Um, in the past, there was an ability to do that under the old policy. They went clearly away from that for various reasons in the new policy. Uh, but identifying a need on small local budgets, not for profits, um, the language that you have in front of you under page three creates an opportunity or the ability for the administrator or the executive director for events sponsored by the TDC. Budgets, total budgets don't exceed $3,000. That upon evaluation and recommendation and approval of either the administrator or the executive director, that they can then advance up to $1,500 for these smaller events with the community. Um, Describe that if you want to add to that at all. No, that's, that's Behind the actual memorandum, there's a pages of page 3 and page 17 that will be amended in the actual TDC policy. Under these isolated and exceptional events, um, you know, either Ms. Jenkins or Mr. Butler's ability to evaluate them and then authorize them for funding them up, up to $1,000 of, of their total sponsorship commitment from the case. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Got a motion by Mr. Michael Moore? I'll second. Got a second by Ms. Bryant. Do I have any opposed? No opposed. Motion carries 4-0. Chairman, next item is interlocal agreement, and Jimmy has that also. Uh, commissioners, I, I'm still in one on one discussions with each of you as the interlocal and various numbers under it. Um, so I requested that the chairman uh, like me and have that on the uh, agenda for today. I'm still in those discussions with each of you individually, addressing your various concerns. So there's nothing for me to offer to you today. I will continue to bring it up. Ask you placed on the agendas, if you're at special meetings, or turn our regular meetings, I will give you updates. Hopefully have uh, actual literature or information specific language to serve you all. So I have a consensus from the Mr. Chairman. I have a motion by Mr. Mike Moore. Second. I have a second by Ms. Bryant. If they opposed, no opposed, meeting is adjourned. Got another one in the morning, right? I'm in the morning. All day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh.